The New York Times publishes an article today detailing the relationship between Hillary Clinton, some big donors to the Clinton Foundation, and a large uranium mining company sold off to the Russians. We were hearing there's a big story out there. Alan, in your mind, does this story add to genuine damage for a possible Hillary Clinton presidential candidacy? Look, the entire Clinton Foundation issue is going to be clearly an issue in this campaign. Um, even if the Clintons are completely, and I think they are, completely honorable and honest and don't allow any of this to influence their opinion, certainly donors who give to the Clinton Foundation may believe, mistakenly, but may believe that they have, if not a thumb, at least a pinky uh, on the scale. Uh, it probably would have been better if there had been some kind of prophylactic rules that uh, prevented anybody that had any conceivable interest in government action during the time she was Secretary of State uh, from contributing to the Clinton Foundation. So it will be an issue, but it will be, I think, a relatively small issue in the scale of things. Uh, Alan, why are you so convinced that the, that the donations had no effect whatsoever uh, on any kind of deliberation before our, our government? Uh, this uh, amount of money given uh, by this uh, Canadian company for this uh, uranium deal, uh, and then all of a sudden Bill Clinton gets $400,000 to speak at Moscow, and you're telling us that you don't think it had anything whatever to do with, uh, uh, with how we're going to react to this deal? Alan, 30 seconds for your response, please. $400,000 is half the price that he usually gets for speaking. He's a very popular and welcome speaker. We use the same speaker agency, so I know how much he earns speaking. I get a tiny, tiny fraction of that. So, no, I think the, I think the presumption of innocence operates, and we have to see proof, and I haven't seen the proof. Uh, and on that note, uh, Alan Dershowitz, we thank you for your time, your legal-slash-political uh, analysis. Larry Elder, as always, from Newsmax LA, we very much appreciate your input on a very busy Thursday morning around the country and around the world. Thank you very much. Thank now, you. when we come back, that Pacific trade deal in front of the House and the Senate, will the House put it to a halt? We'll talk about it with my old congressional colleague, Michael Patrick Flanagan, and former Virginia Governor Jim Gilmore, next. <laughs>